What is trauma and what has it got to do with addiction? Is it the cause of addiction or is it just an excuse that the therapist tell you so that you can blame everything on your parents? Learn what trauma does to people and how it relates to addiction. Hi, I'm Sanya Rosman. I'm a psychotherapist, a medical doctor and author of seven books on process addictions. On this channel, we discuss addiction and recovery, we address relationship problems, helping you learn all you need to know about process addictions. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. Please make sure to watch till the end because we have some exciting news for you. The word trauma is a Greek word that means a wound. But today we will not talk about the physical injuries to the body. We will talk about emotional and psychological trauma. That means any event that is so stressful, so difficult, that it, it exceeds your abilities to cope. And so your body and all your psyche gets into a special state called the agitated state. Traumatic events often involve something threatening to life or to your safety, but it needn't be any event that feels life-threatening or overwhelming to you can elicit a traumatic response, especially the children whose life is depending upon their caregivers, can uh, experience their abandonment or neglect as a life-threatening event. Experiencing trauma in childhood can have a devastating, long-lasting effect on people even when they are already adult. When childhood trauma is not resolved, the tension and anxiety can stay with the people throughout their lives to their adulthood. Let us see how our bodies react to trauma. The reaction is the same for people as well as for animals. This is our animal automatic response to something very threatening. When things like that happen, we automatically switch to alert mode. And that means that our bodies prepare for running or for fighting. Blood goes to the muscles instead of the brain. The brain sort of shuts down because it's too slow and instincts prevail over rationality. And if we think that the challenge is too much, that we will not survive, then we start shutting down, freezing our reactions and preparing for the worst. We are used to thinking that things like that happen only to soldiers in combat or people in violent crimes or people who are victims of uh, natural disasters. It has been proven that years after such events, people react with a condition called post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. It has been observed in war veterans and with people who have been victims in crimes or natural disasters. PTSD is a serious health problem involving nightmares, flashbacks, avoidance, guilt, anxiety, rage, sleep disturbances and fear. But only lately has it been brought to the public attention that children who live in dysfunctional families can also suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. This post-traumatic stress in children can be even worse than with adults and there are three reasons for it. The first is that children are so young, so vulnerable, so inexperienced. And in addition to that, they have nowhere to run to their family is where they belong. And the caregivers, mommy and daddy, or a stepfather or somebody close to the family are most often the perpetrators. So the child is confused. Is this love or is this uh, abuse? Is this violence? And if this happens within a family, in a domestic violence situation, Chances are this will not be a one-time event. This will happen often, maybe weekly, maybe even daily. 
Imagine how it must be for a very small child living in a family where his parents are maybe alcoholics or drug addicts or gamblers. He's coming home from school and along the way he becomes alert to the car, how is it parked in the driveway, to the noises coming from the house, from the kitchen. He is prepared for the worst. They're screaming in the backyard. He goes silently to his room to avoid being the target of the argument. He shuts down, listening to his mother crying for help in the kitchen. His heart is pounding. He's in a state of high alert, waiting and anticipating attack. I hear such stories every day when I sit with my clients who are in recovery from process addictions. They are telling me these things as if it were happening now. Although they are sitting in my office and there's no imminent danger, they feel exactly like things like that are upon them right now. What is the inner reaction of such a child when these things are happening? He's in full alert. His uh, blood is pumping to the muscles. His muscles are tense. He's prepared for fight or to run. And his memory is shutting down. The rational part of their brain is shutting down. Later, they will not remember the event. They will rather uh, think of it as maybe something that happened long time ago or in some distant dream. Their memory will be impaired because the uh, situation hasn't been processed. It has been saved into the body memory in, in form of body tensions, pain and anxiety. And as time goes on, they forget about the event but the tension stays with them. If such events happen often, then serious damage to memory, to thinking, to reasoning may be the consequence because the memory is so often shut down and not connected with the other uh, feelings. Have you ever experienced, upon entering a street or a bar, that suddenly you had a terrible feeling of imminent danger. Your heart was pounding, you were sweating, you were trying to run away. Maybe it was a sound of a melody. It may be the smell of stale alcohol or some other feeling that triggers your memories, your bodily memories stored in your body. And those memories re-emerge in raw state, unprocessed, as if it were happening then. Or maybe sometimes people react to an innocent remark of their partner as if he's going to leave them, abandon them and betray them, although no such thing was uh, in place. This is exactly how traumatic memories feel like. It feels like intense emotion, overwhelming bodily reaction, but no uh, object, no threat, no, uh, no picture what is causing it. And then we think that what's happening now is causing all our feelings and we attack when we attack, we are convinced that we are actually saving our lives, that we are actually protecting ourselves. If we were not in high stress, the brain would process our feelings, our images, our uh, bodily sensations to sort of a film, multidimensional. This is how normal memories feel like, but traumatic memories feel differently. They feel like intense emotions with no image at all. When this happens, you can wake up from a dream all sweaty, all alert, heart pounding, or you may experience a sort of a panic attack without apparent reason or with very little reason for it. This is how it feels. So traumatic reaction 
can help us survive the moment. But if we keep reacting like that often, the problems will accumulate. They will add up one to another and suddenly we will have a new problem out of the what used to be a solution. This new problem will be a problem with thinking, with memory, with reactions. And we will not be aware of it. And what do people, especially the children, feel and do in such situations? It's predictable. The children will feel like something is wrong with them, like they are, it's their fault. They will feel that they have made a mistake or that they are a mistake in themselves. And this will lead to problems with self-worth. Added to the problems of self-worth, there will be shame and expecting a punishment. And this is exactly how the addicts feel all the time. The child in a situation that repeatedly experiences trauma will learn from the people around him who may be addicts that this is the way to cope. They will start using or abusing alcohol, sweet things and later on drugs, sex and things that shut down our memory and help us escape and forget the terrible memories. So this is exactly how the addicts feel most of the time. If you want to learn more about addictions in general, check out my previous videos about it here. And now we can safely conclude, no, trauma does not cause addiction by itself, but it helps the victims of trauma to cope with the situations, with the symptoms, with the tension that they have as a consequence of a trauma that they have experienced. The late consequences of relational, chronic, developmental trauma are tension and anxiety and heightened uh, stress level. And people use whatever helps them. And if they use it repeatedly, time after time, then addiction cycles can start to form and this is when we can start talking about addiction. Actually, addiction means that the person has lost the ability to consciously choose whether to use something or not. In our next videos, we will start to learn about process addictions one by one how they begin, how they feel, how to stop them. You can also check my previous videos about how addictions work and how people feel when they are there. We're interested in giving you the best experience uh, in our videos, so we have decided to make a new studio. And in our next videos, you will see how it worked out. Thank you for watching. If you learned something new today, Consider liking, sharing with others or subscribing to our channel so you will get new information every time we make them. To learn more about my work, visit my websites or follow me on social media. Thank you.